This call is now being recorded. Okay, Jenny. Well, thanks so much for taking a little time out to talk to us. And um, I wanted to first ask you about uh, what made you want to take the comedy show on the road. I mean, after you did the TV special. You know, um, this is something I've kind of been working on for three years now. It was happened, you know, I'm sitting there one day watching a, a comedy show with my girlfriends, and I, I laughed at one comic. And then I went to another uh, comedy show the following week and, again, kind of only laughed at one comic throughout the night. And I thought, wow, I had a certain kind of sense of humor that um, I wonder if I picked out a handful of, you know, female comedians and branded them under one night, how funny that would be. And I took, you know, two almost two and a half years of going from comedy club to comedy club across the country, writing on napkins and open mic nights, and found a group of women that really kind of fit under this brand. Um, you know, I, did, I, was, I was, didn't know what to call them because they were kind of dirty, they were kind of raw, they were real, they were sexy, but they were also really funny. So I just used, you know, a lot of adjectives to describe them and it turned out to be the name of the show. And I couldn't be happier with how they, they, you know, they come together. And it's really, really a funny night of comedy. And have you done this uh, in live settings yet or just the TV special? I'm not, I don't know if the tour has started yet. Um. We we did um, we did do a workshop in um, California. We did a few shows there a weekend, on a weekend, and then we did also – um, two nights in Las Vegas, and then this kind of kicks off the official tour. So we do um, this weekend. We are in Keswick um, uh, Theater, and then then we do the Borgata on May 10th, right. which I'm really excited about. Mm-hmm. So how, for people who maybe saw the TV special, you know, how does this compare? Is it the same comedians? Uh, the format's going to be the same? Are you going to be doing the video that you had shown already? Or, you know, tell us what it's going to be like. Um, you know, I'll probably change up um, a little bit of my, you know, interstitial stuff. I might not have all the video um, pieces. Um, and then also, depending on the city, there might be one comic that's interchanging. I had five in the special. We'll only have four on the tour. Um, so that's really kind of it. But, you know, and I'm sure the comics will be using their um, their best material because, you know, on, on, the, on the special, I didn't know this because this is all new to me, on the special, a lot of the comedians have exclusivity on their jokes with different networks, which was fascinating to me. So um, now that it's on tour and not televised, we get the, the comedians best of the best jokes. Right, right. So there'll be some new stuff people can look forward to, I guess, with that. Um, yeah, for sure. And now going on the road, is this? Is, have you done much of this before where you're kind of touring around? Is this kind of a new experience for you? or? This is absolutely a new experience. Um, I'm not a stand-up, nor do I want to do it. Uh, I really wanted to do it out of a love for it. Um, you know, a lot of people do, you know, things they love. This is one of them. I love to kind of create businesses, and I also love to empower chicks. And I feel like um, by giving them this platform, I can raise attention and give a little bit more media than they're used to. I mean, these girls have been, some of them have been going at it for 20 years. Like, there's some Tammy Pescatelli, Lynn Copeland, so there's a lot of girls, Paula Bell, they've been, they've been really, you know, working very, very hard, and I feel like um, this show on the road, I eventually want to turn into, you know, a docuseries on TV and maybe some radio, so... I feel like this is going to be a really great launching pad for a lot of women that have been working hard. And uh, that's probably a good segue to talk a little bit about The View. Um, I, was, I guess you're wrapping up your first season soon, and I'm just curious to hear from you what your, you know, rookie year has been like as a permanent co-host. <laughs> um, how, how have you been enjoying the experience? It's been, you know, it's. I've learned so much about myself, I can definitely say, in this past year. Um, I took the first few months to kind of get used to, it's being like a freshman in school, to used to people's personalities, per, uh, people's, 
you know, um, point of views, um, their timing. And um, and by Jan- by the time I came back from Christmas break, I was like, okay, I kind of got it down now. And um, coming into my own, I'm now having the best time. I feel like, um, you know, there's room for me to speak. Do like to over talk um, on one on one another. Um, but the best of this year by far has been watching Barbara and um, learning from her. I've been asking her a lot of questions. I've been um, trying to beat her to the punch with certain questions that she'll, like, we'll write out our questions for guests, and, you know, when mine match hers, I couldn't be more excited. Um, you know, and I get a lot of secrets from her. So she's been um, he, it's kind of amazing to be sitting next to this past year, and she only has, I think, 13 days left. So it's going to be quite a sad couple of next weeks for me watching so. So it's been kind of like a crash course in uh, TV from from Barbara Walters. I guess there are probably worse teachers you can yeah. have than that. So yeah, it's true. It's true. And you know she'll she talk about empowering. She wants you to do good, uh, but she'll also want you to do good by testing you. Like she will she will definitely bust your chops and you know see if you will back down from, you know, something that you believe in and she doesn't want you to. So, you know, I asked her a question once, which was, like, how do you get somebody to answer a question and they just won't answer it? And she said, I just say, you haven't answered my question yet. (laughs) Uh I'm like, okay, well, there you go, you know. Um, here I'm waiting for this big philosophical, you know, answer from her. When it's just simply put, she, you know, she keeps at it. She'll stay. She'll keep asking the question. You didn't answer. The, you didn't answer me yet. Right, right. And um, have you been uh, surprised by the sort of, um, I guess we'll call it the excitement you've caused by being on the show? There's been, a, you know, you you cause a lot of conversation online and other places. So were you prepared for that, or did you? Was it more than you anticipated? You know, I'm always kind of blown away by things. Um, it's, it's people thought I was going to use a platform for other, I would call it, um, things I've talked about in my past. And really, it's like I have moved on into a new direction. It's been years. Um, and I, I'm, I'm amazed that people keep bringing up things that I haven't talked about in years. And I'll leave it at that. Uh-huh. Okay, and moving on, um, I wanted to ask you about your book. I think it just came out, right? Stirring the Pot, that's the latest one? Yes. And um, you've you've written, uh, you know, uh, several books before, and I'm serious, well, you know, what inspired this one? What what did you feel like you wanted to get out there and and say this time around? You know, this one, um, I I was looking at a cookbook, and I was was admiring how – the ingredients were all there and how you need a little bit of this and a little bit of that to make the kind of perfect meal. And I thought to myself, um, uh, things like that in life, life lessons, how I wanted to do kind of a knockoff of a cookbook. And so I had these ingredients of things that, things it might take to create um, perfect opportunities in your life or the ingredients it takes to conquer fear or the ingredients it takes to get over relationships. And, and it's exactly kind of what I did using my life experiences with a kind of cookbook format um, in the storytelling. Cause I think you can learn best through storytelling and especially since I'm willing to kind of reveal all the bruises um, and bumps I've had along the way. Um, this one is, you know, by far, I call it the lightest. Um, it's not as heavy, but um, definitely the most inspirational. And um, you you mentioned, you know, how you're so comfortable sort of sharing your stories. Um, is that something that comes naturally, or did you have to – did that develop over time that you feel like you can, you know, tell people things? Not everybody is, is comfortable. Even people in the public eye aren't, aren't always so comfortable, you know, sharing things. So. Um, I, I think I've always been like that. My mom, I recall, 
in my flashbacks of my head, I can see her putting her hand over her face, even when I'm in kindergarten, saying things out loud. Um, I just, I always felt like if I'm honest with everyone, how I'm feeling, or about experiences, then I've nothing to hide. And that makes life a lot easier. So, you know, people have come up to me in my career and said, you know, it might be nice to kind of hold things, um, you know, to yourself or private. And I feel like, sure, there are some things, but for the parts that people can learn from them, why wouldn't I share it? You know, I always like to, like, listen to my girlfriend's drama for the reason being that maybe I can learn through their mistakes so I don't have to go through it myself. And I feel like if I share a lot of the things that I've gone through, people can look at that and learn instead of having to do the same things that I've gone through. Okay. Well, Jenny, I think that's everything I wanted to ask you today. So I think we only have a limited amount of time anyway. So should we – We'll call it, call it a call and, and leave it at that. So thanks so much for, for taking time. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, hon.